Today we're going to be talking about not rendering components, but instead rendering view models. What we normally see happens in a UI app is that the designers of whatever framework we might be using, React, Angular, Vue, or any other framework like that, will give us a suite of tools that enable us to create lots of data and transformations and state and logic, etc., etc., and put these things together and process that information and change it over time alongside things like user interactions, events that happen in the browser, stuff that happens inside the framework it's itself. We end up with the situation where there are lots of different things going on with inside the UI app. So this is just a representation of the UI app with some sort of inputs and outputs to the system. So I just want to talk her through a couple of points here. When we use uh, any type of UI framework to build an app and we put all of these things in together, we get high amounts of coupling inside that app. What that really means Coupling is the interdependency between any information with inside a group of files, okay? What that means is that if I have one file which has, uh, you know, data models in and it has uh, functions in, and I have another file with data models and functions in, there is communication between the two, you know, either directly or via a third party. The more lines that cross from one, in other words, the more times I call one type of function, either directly or indirectly from the other one, denotes the amount of coupling, okay? And the more information that I can see in this file from this file also denotes the amount of coupling. And so when we build our UI apps and we put everything in together, we put all of the data models and we put all of the processes and we put all of the transformation and we put all of the user interaction logic and we put all of the state, we get a high amount of coupling. Right. When we get a high amount of coupling, that is inversely proportional to the amount of reusability. As soon as we begin coupling systems together and increasing the amount of components and complexity and application, we increase the amount of coupling, we automatically reduce the reusability. And this makes complete sense if you think about it, because the more that our files begin to talk to each other, the more specific they come to that situation, right? So if we have a component in such as a React app, and we have a high level component that needs to talk to lots of low level components, or it needs to provide do things like provide state, or it needs to provide a top level prop tree, et cetera, et cetera. And all of these bottom components are feeding off this top component. We now have the situation where we've got independency between these files, okay? Now, not sometimes the coupling will, will exist in code bases between files, but in React, it can often happen as a side effect to building it in its tree shape, which it wants, okay? And when we get that high amount of coupling, we reduce the reusability. If we are passing information through the React layer and we're passing it through all of the props and all of the state mechanism and all of the hooks, okay, we are going to automatically reduce reusability no matter how hard we try because we've increased the coupling. Right. And the final bit is testability. When we when we render components and we put all the components together in the app, and by the way, this also applies to Angular and Vue, when we put everything together inside the thing, we make testing more difficult. Why? Because the only way to test all of these things together when they're highly coupled and not very reusable is to test them as a unit, is to test them together. And the only way we can do that is to use complicated testing tools such as end-to-end -end testing tools, or something like React Testing Library, which is going to render a snapshot. And that is highly coupled. That type of testing itself is highly coupled. So the solution to this is to begin to, instead of rendering components, is to begin to move towards rendering view models. And a view model is really simple. It's just a flat representation, okay? A two-dimensional data model, if you like. A flat representation of all the information that would have been contained in here, would have represented all the coupling. And it, you flatten it down and you, pr you present to the framework a very simple data structure. So you pull whatever information is relevant to the view, you pull it out and you expose that on its own in a decoupled, un uh, reusable way that is, completely, that is testable. Okay? You pull that out of the main suite of components into its own place so that it can be rendered on its own and it's not coupled to the components. Okay? And then what you do is you pull it back into the components afterwards, all right? And so by abstracting that out, you're going to reduce the coupling because now you have a view model that's independent of the components. So if you want to make that view model stateful, 
it's independent. If you want to make it, um, you know, if you want to make it a functional new model, it's independent. It's just a data structure. It's just a thing that exists on its own. So you can decouple it. You then automatically make it reusable. So you can more easily share it between components because you pass it back in as I've done here. And finally, the most important thing of when you extract out view models from your architecture, from your UI architecture, is that you massively improve testing. Because now you can grab those view models in isolation and you can use a simple unit testing framework. That's right, a unit testing framework, not an end-to-end -end testing framework, just a simple unit testing framework to check the output of your system, to check that the view model was prepared correctly, and to make sure that when you do pass it back into the framework in a decoupled, reusable and testable manner, that it's going to easily render and that your system as a whole is going to behave exactly as you uh, expect it to behave. So it's a quick lesson in why to render view models, not components, in a UI app, in a UI architecture. If you would like to learn more about building UI architectures in this sort of way, I'm running a free web training class this week. In it, we're going to be going over three things. Firstly, we're going to be going over the eight principles that you can use uh, to consistently scale up and build and test your UI apps in any UI framework. Secondly, I'm going to be teaching you a day-to-day -day holistic developer process, which is going to enable you to write better code as you code. It's a guardrails approach that you can begin using today to enable you to write better code in your UI architectures in any UI app, React, Angular, or Vue. And finally, I'm going to be teaching you how to make the transition from being a regular UI engineer to being a UI architect engineer and starts to understand things like this about decoupling, improving reusability, and radically improving testing through the use of new models. Hope you enjoyed today's video. If you'd like to click the link on around this video, you're gonna get taken through to the next page. And on there, you click the link and you sign up to the webinar. And I'll see you in the training. Cheers.